the World Health Organization has been keeping a secret, and now it's been exposed. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. At this point, everyone knows that the World Health Organization has done nothing but praise the Chinese Communist Party's response to the coronavirus. Here's the head of the WHO. China took action massively at the epicenter, at the source of the outbreak. This is heroic. The actions of China is making us safer. On January 30th, the WHO wrote, the speed with which China detected the outbreak, isolated the virus, sequenced the genome, and shared it with WHO and the world are very impressive and beyond words. So is China's commitment to transparency. Now, this is strange, considering Chinese leaders knew about the coronavirus, but didn't warn the public for six key days. But what's even stranger is that the World Health Organization was praising China even while they didn't agree with it. That's right. The WHO knew China wasn't being open and transparent, was frustrated by it, and yet publicly, they still praised the Chinese regime. That's according to this piece by the Associated Press. Somehow, AP got access to recordings of internal meetings held by the WHO in January. And what those internal recordings say is very different from this. The actions of China is making us safer. Even though publicly the WHO said China shared the genome of the coronavirus, quote, immediately, the leaked recordings show that China actually sat on it for more than a week. On top of that, China stalled for at least two weeks more on providing WHO with detailed data on patients and cases. This was incredibly frustrating to WHO officials, despite what they were telling the public. So, why did they do it? Why did they praise China when they knew that this delay would cost lives? Well, the WHO suffers from the same crippling worldview as a lot of organizations, politicians, and academics. You have to appease the Chinese Communist Party if you want to gain access to China. Giving in to authoritarian regimes has a history of working out really well. Anyway, the WHO feared that if they pushed too hard, the Chinese regime would just completely cut off the WHO and give them no data. I'm sure it didn't help that the head of the WHO, Dr. Tedros, was elected to his position with the support of the Chinese regime. It also didn't help that China was investing heavily in his home country, Ethiopia, like building a $500 million railway. For more on that, watch our episode, Coronavirus, How WHO Corruption Helped It Spread. So the World Health Organization has a special relationship with China. But it doesn't have a problem putting pressure on other countries. For example, the AP's leaked recordings show that Dr. Michael Ryan, the executive director of the WHO's emergencies program, knew that China was being treated differently and that it would hurt the WHO's reputation. According to AP, last September, the WHO had issued an unusual public rebuke of Tanzania for not providing enough details about a worrisome Ebola outbreak. We have to be consistent, Ryan said. The danger now is that despite our good intent, especially if something does happen, there will be a lot of finger pointing at the WHO. Well, they were not consistent. Do you think there could be finger pointing at the WHO? China has total control over the World Health Organization. We have detailed the reforms that it must make and engage with them directly, but they have refused to act. What's even more shocking about this whole thing is it really reveals how China's control over the WHO has grown. Take how the WHO responded back in 2003 to the SARS epidemic from China. 
Early in the outbreak, the WHO issued a rare World Health Alert. It carefully investigated Chinese hospital wards, proving senior Chinese officials were lying about the disease. They even told people in Hong Kong not to travel to southern China, even though that corporate travel was worth big bucks. As the Wall Street Journal said at the time, by taking a zero-tolerance approach to the disease with governments as disparate as China and Canada, the WHO may well have limited the toll of SARS at the crucial early stage. That sounds like a very different World Health Organization to the one we have today. What happened? Well, the Chinese Communist Party saw how the World Health Organization really kept them from being able to successfully cover up SARS. So, Beijing backed the appointment of Margaret Chan, a former director of health in Hong Kong, as WHO Director General from 2006 to 2017. While Chan was the head of the WHO, she disinvited Taiwan from the organization's annual meeting because, according to Chan, Taiwan wasn't recognizing the One China Principle. But it was totally not because Beijing wanted her to do it. By the way, after leaving the WHO, Margaret Chan is now a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, a Chinese government advisory body. Here she is in Chinese state-run media in 2018, talking about how much China has improved since SARS. In 2003, when China was dealing with SARS, it didn't know how to handle it. And of course, you know, for whatever reason, China was heavily criticized by the world. But since 2003, China has invested in improving its healthcare system, in improving you know, the uh, information system, mm. in reporting to World Health Organization, and being very transparent. Right. China is very transparent to the WHO. That interview didn't age well. And after Chan left the WHO, Beijing backed Tedros. As foreign minister in Ethiopia, he had previous relationships with Chinese authorities. And when Tedros was health minister in Ethiopia, there were accusations that he had helped the government cover up several outbreaks of cholera. So clearly, he was the right man to run the WHO. At least, to run China's WHO. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you a fan who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. Today's question comes from Alfred Schneider. Chris, given the recent changes in Hong Kong law, will you guys at China Uncensored feel safe traveling to Hong Kong in the future? A very good question. Not that I really felt safe traveling to Hong Kong last year during the protests. Police were a tad aggressive. At least I can now say I know what tear gas feels like. It made me sad. But now, Beijing is pushing a new national security law that will likely strip away many of Hong Kong's freedoms. Already, people critical of the Chinese regime have been blocked from entering Hong Kong. And a few days ago, Hong Kong extended its current ban on foreign travelers until September, which I'm sure is all about the coronavirus and has nothing to do with all the foreign press that came last year to cover the protests. So, moving forward, it's less and less likely we'll be able to get in. We would still like to go to Hong Kong, but we'll have to evaluate the situation once travel opens back up. Thanks for your question. And if you'd like me to answer your question on the show, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help us continue to uncensor China, despite YouTube censorship and demonetization. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to join. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.